Alright, in this video we are going to prove that the cosine of the difference of two angles, alpha minus beta, is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha by the sine of beta. And subsequently we will use this to prove that the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha by cosine of beta minus sine of alpha by sine of beta. And then we will also prove that the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the sine of alpha by the cos of beta plus the sine of beta by cos of alpha. And finally, we will prove that the sine of alpha minus beta is equal to the sine of alpha times the cos of beta minus the sine of beta times the cos of alpha. So these are called the sum difference formulae, or the sum difference formulas. And we will use a combination of geometry and algebraic manipulation to help us find the solutions. Okay, let's start with a unit circle centered about the origin. So we have a horizontal x-axis and a vertical y-axis. And if I describe a, a unit circle of radius 1 about the center, and of course this is not perfect, but it is good enough for our purposes. And I suppose that I have a ray from the origin to the edge of a circle. And the ray forms an obtuse angle of alpha with respect to the x-axis. Then the coordinates of this point are cos of alpha, comma, sine of alpha. And now suppose that I have another ray from the origin to the edge of the circle, and this time it forms a acute angle of beta with the x-axis. And of course the coordinates of this green point are cos of beta, comma, sine of beta. And then I can construct a chord from the yellow point to the green point and give this chord a length of C. And so we can see that the angle subtended by this uh, yellow and green line is alpha minus beta. And now this triangle formed by the yellow, cyan and green line can be translated or rotated to the horizontal axis. And I'll do that on another unit circle. So if I have another set of horizontal and vertical axes and another unit circle, which won't be perfect but will be good enough for our purposes, this triangle, if I transpose or, or rotate or translate whatever you like, to the horizontal. So the yellow line comes here, the angle is alpha minus beta. The coordinates of these yellow points are now the cosine of alpha minus beta and comma the sine of alpha minus beta. The coordinates of what used to be the green line are of course 1 comma 0 and the cyan line still has a length of C. And these are the two geometries we'll use to prove the first equation. So on the first circle the vertical component of the chord C even though chord C looks as it's almost horizontal, I'm going to give the uh, short vertical component the label of B. 
and I'm going to give the horizontal component a length of A. And we can find the length of B by finding the difference between the Y coordinates. So B is equal to sine of alpha minus the sine of beta. Whichever order they come in at the moment is not important. So for the sake of the alphabet, I'll have alpha in front of the beta. And similarly, to find the length of A, we simply find the difference of the X coordinates. So it'll be cos of alpha minus the cos of beta. And again, the order is not important because once we square these in Pythagoras' theorem, the answer will come out to be positive anyway. So speaking of which, Pythagoras' theorem is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And hence we have cos of alpha minus cos of beta squared plus sine of alpha minus sine of beta squared is equal to c squared. Now if we perform a binomial expansion of these two expressions we will get cosine squared alpha minus 2 cos alpha cos beta plus cos beta squared or cos squared beta plus sine squared alpha minus 2 sine alpha sine beta plus sine squared beta. Alright, now doing a bit of simplifying, we see that cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 1. So we take these two away. And also cos squared beta plus sine squared beta is also equal to 1. So now we replace these two with 1. So we have 1 plus 1 and we have a minus 2 cos alpha cos beta and a minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. So let's take the minus 2 outside and we will get cos of alpha times cos of beta plus the sine of alpha by the sine of beta. And of course 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so we have 2 minus 2 outside of cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So this is c squared. And let me call this equation 1. Now let me just draw a bit of a partition between these two. So in the second circle we have, again if I call the vertical component, let's call the vertical component b1, and let's call the horizontal component of c a1. So for the second circle we have B1, the vertical height is equal to the difference of the Y coordinates, so sine of alpha minus beta minus zero, and of course that's just equal to sine of alpha minus beta. And the horizontal component A2 is equal to the difference of the two horizontal components, so we have cos of alpha minus beta minus 1. So for the second circle we have c squared is equal to a1 squared plus b1 squared and that's equal to cos of alpha minus beta minus 1 all squared plus sine of alpha minus beta squared and this gives us if we binomially expand the first expression we get cos squared of alpha minus beta minus 2 cos of alpha minus beta plus 1 plus sine squared of alpha minus beta 
and again cos squared of alpha minus beta plus the sine squared of alpha minus beta is equal to 1. So these two can be replaced by 1. And we have another plus 1 here. And we also have a minus 2 times cos alpha minus beta remaining. And of course 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So we have c squared is equal to 2 minus 2 times cos alpha minus beta. And I'm going to call this equation 2. c in either case had the same length. So equation 1 and equation 2 are equal to each other. So if I equate these, I will get 2 minus 2 cos alpha minus beta is equal to 2 minus 2 cos of alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta and now I can eliminate the 2 on each side of the equation and I also can divide both sides by minus 2 so that eliminates the minus 2 here and the minus 2 here and I end up with cos of alpha minus beta is equal to cos of alpha by cos of beta plus sine of alpha by sine of beta. And this is the first of the four sum difference formulae. And now we can use this result to derive all of the other formulas. If we let beta equals negative gamma and substitute this into the above result, we'll get cosine of alpha minus negative gamma is equal to the cosine of alpha by the cosine of negative gamma plus the sine of alpha by the sine of negative gamma. And the double negative here of course becomes a positive so we have the cosine of alpha plus gamma is equal to the cosine of alpha. Now the cosine of negative gamma is equal to the cosine of positive gamma so we can write this as the cosine of gamma. The sine of alpha remains as it is. Now the sine of negative gamma is equal to negative of the sine of gamma so we can write this as sine of gamma and we'll change this sign to a negative negative. and if we swap the letters out so if we swap the gammas now back for uh, betas will have the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha by cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha minus uh, by the sine of beta. And this gives us the second of the sum difference formulas. Now if we let alpha equals pi on 2 minus gamma and substitute this into the result above. We'll get the cosine of pi on 2 minus gamma plus beta and that's equal to the cosine of pi on 2 minus gamma by the cosine of beta minus the sine of pi on 2 minus gamma by the sine of beta. Now I can do a little bit of algebraic manipulation and take a negative out of these two terms. So I get a uh, negative outside of gamma minus beta and now we know that uh, cosine of pi on 2 minus anything is equal to the sine of that. So we have sine of gamma minus beta because this is simply a phase shift by 90 degrees. So a phase shift by 90 degrees converts a cosine into a sine and the vice versa with sine. So uh, here we uh, have the sine of gamma <coughs> by the cosine of beta minus and again uh, this is a phase shift of 90 degrees or pi on 2 so it converts the sine into a cosine so we have a cosine of gamma 
by the sine of beta. And now we just again swap the letters out. So instead of gamma we write alpha. So we have sine of alpha minus beta is equal to the sine of alpha by cos beta minus cos alpha by sine beta. And this gives us the fourth of the sum difference formulas. And to get the third of the sum difference formulae, I simply change this negative beta into a positive beta. So we have the sine of alpha plus beta. And what this does is puts a negative beta here and a negative beta here. And of course, cos of negative beta is still cos beta. So we write the sine of alpha by cos of beta minus the cos of alpha. Sine of negative beta is negative sine of beta. So this gives us a double negative, which becomes a positive, And I just write the sine of beta. So this is the third of the sum difference formulae. Now finally, let's look at the case where alpha and beta are equal to each other. So here we have the sine of 2 alpha is equal to the sine of alpha times the cos of alpha plus the cos of alpha by sine of alpha. And of course here we'll get 2 by sine of alpha cos of alpha. And so this is another handy identity to remember. And if we treat the same for this, we'll have the cosine of 2 alpha is equal to cosine of alpha by the cosine of alpha minus the sine of alpha by the sine of alpha, which gives us cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. And likewise, this is another handy trigonometric identity to remember. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope you've learned something. If you have found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up, and please subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you with your math studies.